Hello everyone, Rob Arntfield speaking to you from Western University's Division of Critical Care and Critical Care Ultrasound. Going to talk to you today about a standardized approach to insinating the lungs and pleura that we use in our ICU. This standard approach captures both what is commonly described in the literature as well as uh, endorsed at many national courses. By way of background, lung ultrasound is a novel form of ultrasound described by Daniel Lichtenstein, a French nocturnist, and uh, there are really a finite list of lung ultrasound patterns that can be interpreted. You'll learn more about these in a subsequent screencast about interpretation. All of these findings are well published and have been studied, and in most instances, the ultrasound findings have better diagnostic performance than chest x-ray and are comparable to CT. Some of these diagnostic performances are displayed here for your perusal with some landmark papers to guide further reading. So the lung and pleural ultrasound technique is what we'll now discuss. Firstly, you need to know which probe to pick up and in most instances for critical care ultrasound, we advise the use of the phased array or cardiac probe for its small footprint and ease of use and ability to be applied anywhere in the body without having to switch probes multiple times for the same patient. If, however, your only question is the presence or absence of lung sliding and the presence or absence of pneumothorax, using a vascular transducer or high frequency transducer is acceptable for its vivid portrayal of the pleural line. It is not as strong in our experience for interpretation of lung artifacts otherwise. The orientation of the probe is always going to be one in a sagittal or coronal projection, depending on where the probe is held. And all that means for you is that the dot should always be pointing towards the patient's head, no matter where you have the transducer on the chest. In general, the preset one may use, especially on our machines here locally, is an abdominal preset rather than the cardiac preset for the phased probe. Some vendors are uh, coming out with lung presets, which obviously are favorable in those instances. We find that this preset uh, tends to maximize the portrayal of the artifacts present in lung sonography. So let's get on with describing which places to put the probe to effectively examine a chest. Much like a stethoscope examination, there is varying degrees of exhaustiveness you may apply to assess a chest, and there is a balance between exhaustiveness and efficiency and diagnostic yield. As such, we have standardized a four-view protocol, so four places on each hemithorax where one should look at the lung or pleura with the ultrasound probe. First is the anterior chest wall, second or third interspace midclavicular line. Secondly is the lateral chest wall, fourth or fifth interspace anterior axillary line, right about where the nipple should be in most patients. Both of these areas are assessments for the lung, that is assessments of lung parenchyma. And as you'll learn, that is an assessment for the presence or absence of lung sliding, the presence or absence of A lines or B lines. So that is the lung ultrasound component in this example of the right chest. Moving on to pleural ultrasound is going to be that of the diaphragm and the costophrenic angle on the right side in this case, looking for pleural effusion or consolidation of the lung. And your last view is going to be something called the PLAPS point, which we'll review in a moment, which is effectively an extremely dependent region of the lung where you will find the highest sensitivity for detection of consolidation and pleural fluid. The combination of these points, as I've mentioned, the red X's represent lung assessment. You're assessing the parenchyma. The orange indicates more pleural-based assessments. The combination of them really represent a thoracic ultrasound, in this case, just of the right hemithorax. And that would be a typical scope of examination for a patient with undifferentiated respiratory failure or assessment of their respiratory failure. Of course, you would continue on and do this on the left side of the patient as well, and that would represent a complete uh, thoracic ultrasound. So let's review these views one by one. So the first was the anterior chest wall view. In this case, the right anterior chest wall or RACWA. We abbreviate our views. We must label our views on the machine because as you'll see in a moment, lung ultrasound views, they often don't possess any lateralizing anatomy that tells you what side of the patient is being examined. So for archiving and re image review purposes, it's always important to place the text on the screen identifying where your probe is at the time of the image being acquired. So the right anterior chest wall view would be placed 
as I've mentioned in the second third interspace in the midclavicular line. And here is a example of the image you may obtain with the phased probe. You can see properly labeled view. The dot is on the left side because we're in the abdominal preset. You have the plural line here. You have rib shadows that are not centered in, this, in the middle of your screen, but instead are off to the side. We know that the rib shadow is the first hyperechoic line deep to the rib shadow is the plural line. And in this case, we see an A-line pattern in the absence of B-lines. We know the depth here is 16. We tend to image the plural line and the lung at a depth usually around 10 centimeters. So this is a little bit deep. Uh, however, the depth will vary by patient body habitus, of course. So after your first view of the lung, you're going to move down and laterally to the anterior axillary line view, which is effectively a middle lobe type assessment of the lung, looking again to characterize what the lung parenchyma look like there. This is your Raxel view, the RAXL view, which again we'll label. Here we see on a CT depiction where the probe would be placed, and you see how you would gather different information about the parenchyma in this view. And here is a real-time image of uh, this view, again appropriately labeled, the abdominal preset we note, and here the depth is probably a bit more appropriate, around 10 centimeters. We see the rib shadows again in the off to the side of the image with the plural line centered right in the middle. We can see dynamic movement suggesting sliding and uh, an A-line that kind of comes in and out of view uh, at uh, various intervals. If ever you're not able to bring out A-lines well enough, small adjustments in transducer position to ensure the probe is exactly perpendicular to the pleura should be able to bring out A-lines if indeed they're present. So now that's the two views in the right chest, using the right chest as our example here of lung ultrasound. Moving on to the pleural assessment, we would then look for the costophrenic angle or the right costophrenic angle or our costo view in the CT correlate as you can see there and here we find a abdominal preset with the dot on the left side and the liver being the right side the diaphragm and we can see a curtaining lung coming in from towards the patient's head or the cranial side of the screen suggesting the absence of pleural fluid in this instance the probe for this view is placed in the mid-axillary line, just inferior to where you were previously for the lung assessment. Lastly, the PLAPS point, and PLAPS, in case you're wondering, coined by Professor Lichtenstein himself, is the postrolateral alveolar and or pleural syndrome location, which is an effectively an extremely long-winded way of saying you're going to find lots of stuff in this view if you can generate it. In supine ICU patients, it can be a challenge to get your probe all the way back here, effectively almost at the margin of where the latissimus dorsi inserts. Sometimes you have to roll your patients or, or dig very deep into the mattress to be able to get this far back. But as you can see on the CT reconstruct, and as we know from CTing many of our patients in the ICU, this is really where a lot of pathology lies. Finding consolidation or pleural fluid takes a bit of effort on ultrasound, however the accuracy is similar to CT and being able to pick up these signatures. And here you see again a, now a PLAPS view with the abdominal preset and uh, the ribs are often a little closer together back there so you'll find that uh, rib shadows are a little bit more of a burden but again we can identify the plural line and in this case we can identify a bit more pathology as is typical in this location uh, suggesting some uh, dependent edema likely with some beelines which we'll review in another screencast present here in this right plaps point. So as a final conclusion and reminder, anterior chest wall, anterior axillary line, costophrenic angle, plaps point on both sides of the, the chest. Those four points will give you information about the lung parenchyma as well as the pleural space for all sorts of different thoracic diseases that may be causing your patient's respiratory failure. While we only showed and highlighted the terminology and right-sided views, the left-sided views are really no different other than the presence of the heart, which will occasionally, ironically, be in the way of your lung ultrasound, but is easy to find your way around in most instances. I hope this has been helpful in clarifying the approach to lung and pleural ultrasound in the ICU patient. Stay tuned for another screencast to guide your interpretation of the images you produce using these views. Thanks for listening.